Hi everyone, welcome to my CFS recovery video. I <laughs> am really excited that I'm finally at a point in my life where I can say that I fully recovered from CFS and I can share with you guys the things that have helped me in my recovery. It still kind of feels surreal. It's been about a few weeks now since I've started to feel really, really good in my body again. Um, but yeah, I think I'm ready to share everything with you guys. Um, before I get into the tips, I just want to take some time to go over my story for those of you who are new to my channel and you don't know um, the journey that I've been on. If you are a regular uh, viewer here on my channel, feel free to skip forward through this part because you probably know this already uh, and just skip forward to the tips. So my CFS creeped in um, very slowly. It happened um, after the first year of uni. And um, basically I went through a year that was quite emotionally um, draining. Uh, my parents at that time moved to Turkey. Uh, my sister moved to Thailand. So it was just me all alone in my family home. Um, and there were some other things happening that year as well, which caused some emotional turmoil and trauma for me. And then on top of that, I got sick with the flu three times in the span of two months. So my body was really drained as well. And I remember from that point on, I started noticing my fatigue setting in um, stronger than it usually is like everyone kind of has like normal you know that kind of midday slump where you feel a bit tired uh, but for me it started to get a lot worse than that where I felt like I couldn't skip my nap I couldn't properly concentrate um, and then from that point forward over the years it would kind of um, get worse and then get better a little bit it was this kind of like it went through phases basically uh, and then in I believe it was 2016 when I started teaching full-time yoga um, I was teaching about 10 to 12 classes a week I noticed after a couple of months of doing that that my fatigue got really out of hand um, and it was really hard for me to do daily tasks like they took a lot of energy from me I had to do a lot of napping to recover from the things that I was doing um, but I still pushed forward at that point. Um, I hadn't had an official diagnosis yet. Couldn't quite figure out what was wrong with me. I went to the doctor multiple times actually to get my blood tested and you know, the doctor would say like, oh, like you're perfectly fine. You don't have any deficiencies. There's nothing else that we can figure out. Like just rest, like just, you know, de-stress a little and it'll probably, you know, cure it for you, which it didn't. Um, then fast forward a couple of years, I moved to London, I believe it was 2017 or 2018. And that's when I decided to actually take a break, a full break from work for three months, just to rest and focus on my recovery. Um, at the time, I didn't really have any tools yet on how to heal from CFS. Um, so what I did was just a whole lot of resting. And for those of you who are recovering from CFS, you know that resting is great, but it doesn't cure your CFS. It doesn't actually um, help you get through um, your CFS. Um, so after three months, when I realized, well, nothing's really changing, I'm still at the same level of tiredness, I might as well just start working a little bit again. So I started working here and there again, really pushing myself. Um, having to nap a lot um, and then fast forward to April 2019 that's when I decided to fully start stop working for a long time um, because it had gotten to a point where I couldn't even go out for a 15 minute walk without feeling extremely tired afterwards needing to nap for at least an hour to recover from that 15 minute walk things like going to the groceries was quite difficult for me and daily tasks around the house were just extremely draining. Uh, it just felt like everything was asking so much energy of my body and my body was just constantly running on below energy levels, like below zero energy levels. It was also in April 2019 that I got my official CFS diagnosis by my doctor. 
so at that point I was like okay like I need to actually take this seriously and try finding different things like I can't just rest because obviously I've tried that and just resting by itself is not doing anything so I tried different things um, I went to an acupuncturist I did some Chinese herbal medicine um, I went to group sessions at the CFS and ME Center up in Brain and even though those helped with managing the symptoms those things um, it didn't actually help me get better long term. Now for those of you who have been following my channel you also know that I was dealing with digestive issues at the time and I consulted with Goji Men. He is another YouTube YouTuber here on YouTube. Um, he's a nutritionist and he focuses mainly on digestive health. Um, and he actually helped me a lot with um, healing my digestion. That was one of the things, one of the symptoms on top of tiredness that I was dealing with. Just to quickly recap, because I'm not sure if I actually went into the symptoms here, but I had tiredness, I had digestive issues. Um, I would get these all over my body, like aches and pains. I would get uh, headaches. If I really pushed myself, um, I would feel very sensitive to lights and sounds. I would have to lay in bed. Um, the whole day and I couldn't entertain myself by watching YouTube videos or even reading because that was too much stimulation for my nervous system and that would just it would hurt if that makes sense like it would hurt to watch a YouTube video or to read something like my brain couldn't process it um, that was like in the worst the worst the worst periods of my CFS so um, I think it was summer of 2019 when Goji Men helped me work through my digestive issues which um, he did successfully I uh, my di digestion <laughs> kind of came back to life so to say because I was very sluggish before um, but uh, it didn't help me with my tiredness with my actual CFS so at that point I tried many different things um, some of them like I said helped a little bit with just managing the symptoms but not actually fully getting rid of them so that's my backstory let's now go into what actually helped me heal my CFS so the most important thing for me was to understand that for me at least um, CFS was something that had to do with my nervous system and my brain it had to do with my nervous system being in a constant state of fight and flight and not knowing how to down regulate it to a normal sort of relaxed um, state of being um, my nervous system and my brain was interpreting everything even daily things as threats um, so what basically had happened is that way back in my first year of university because I had that really intense year and I didn't fully, um, my nervous system never really fully recovered from it, it had gotten stuck in this fight or flight um, mode where the smallest things would um, basically trigger me and would make my body go into a state of freeze. So that's how I, from the moment I understood like there was actually nothing physically wrong with my body because up to that point I was always looking for physical ailments like maybe I had some kind of weird disease that was causing fatigue as a side effect or um, maybe I had some deficiency that for some reason people can figure out <laughs> where the deficiency was or whatever. Um, when I started researching into neuroplasticity and the effects um, that stress or long-term stress can have on the regulation of your nervous system, that's when I started realizing like, okay, there's something here for me, like this really clicks for me. Um, a really good book that I recommend to you is Mind Changed by Heather McKean. And then there's another podcast um, by a doctor, I just forgot his name now, but I'll put a screenshot of it uh, on here and I'll have everything linked below as well. A combination of listening to that podcast and reading Heather's book really um, clicked for me and made it obvious for me that actually my body is perfectly fine. Like physically, there is nothing wrong with me. It's my nervous system that has kind of gotten out of whack and I'm now interpreting normal things that I would feel during the day such as you know that mid-afternoon slump that everyone feels my body would interpret that as something very threatening and would put me into a free state in my own body and make me very sleepy and very tired as a self-defense mechanism um, so what I do now every time that a symptom comes up is just remind myself 
my body is fine. My body is absolutely healthy, absolutely okay. I am just experiencing a normal symptom, something that other people experience as well. Like no one feels 100% energized all of the time, 100% good in their body all of the time. It's normal that you have little things come up here and there and that you don't feel as energized every single day. Like our body kind of fluctuates in that sense. And so reminding myself like, hey, this is normal. <laughs> you can relax, like it's all good. Um, that really helped for me and what Heather says in her book which I really like is that she the way she sees it the perspective that she has is that her body is really really good at doing chronic fatigue or doing she has a bunch of other illnesses that she cured doing all these illnesses that she had um, what you have to do now is kind of reprogram your brain to do really well the other way instead of doing really well the program of CFS. Um, it's kind of hard sometimes to explain into words it's exactly what all of this is. I really recommend you read the book um, and listen to the podcast. I have a little doggy coming up. Hi doggy. <laughs> Hi my little friend. <laughs> So that was the first kind of really big thing that I noticed had a really big impact on um, my healing journey. The second one which kind of falls in line with the first one is that I had to actually physically release the trauma from my body. Um, and if you guys have seen one of my previous vlogs, I went to a breath workshop um, where my intention was to release any sort of resentment that I had um, towards my parents and fully forgive them and see them in their humanness and hold space for them in their humanness. Um, it was a very powerful um, ceremony for me. I, my body was like constantly shaking and trembling, releasing trauma from the muscles. I was crying a lot. I will link you, sorry, the dog is saying funny stuff. I will link you to that video if you want to know more about the breath workshop and the things that I felt there. Um, but after that breath workshop, I, I feel like something just shifted in my body. Something went away. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to say it, but I felt like there was a lightness again in my body. There was a lightness in my spirit. I'm now able to talk to my parents without feeling triggered all over the place. I'm able to hold space for who they are as humans. And um, I can just sense that my nervous system and my body has released um, any of the things that I was holding on from the past. And I really noticed after that breath workshop that my need for naps was decreasing quite rapidly. So it doesn't mean that you have to go and find a breath workshop, um, but you can maybe find another way to physically release traumas from your body. Um, there are some books like um, Your Body Keeps the Score. Uh, I think there's another book by um, Gabor Mate or maybe that's his book. I'll put those books up here as well and in the link uh, in the description down below. But yeah, I noticed that that was a very big step for me um, to be able to progress forward. The third thing that I had to do and which I was already working on, I would say like at least a year or two ago, I've been working on that, is creating a life on my own terms and really only doing things that feel right to me. Um, at the time when I was teaching yoga a couple of years ago and I was uh, teaching 10 to 12 classes a week, which is kind of normal for a full-time yoga teacher, um, I had come to the realization that that kind of work schedule is something that just doesn't work with my body, it doesn't work with me and who I am and it's not something that I actually want to do. I want to create a life for myself where there's a lot more balance, where I can work but also have enough time to just live to spend time with my friends and my family and to explore my neighborhood or other countries and go traveling and um, having now created a life for myself where I can do those things it is very nourishing to my nervous system because I feel like I've created a life that I'm actually excited about that I feel good about where I'm no longer worried about what people think my love should look like or what they're expecting of me. I'm doing everything on my own terms. And every time I make a decision, I ask myself, is this what I really want or is this what I feel like I should be doing? 
and then always doing the things that I really feel called to do from a deeper part of myself, not because I'm in my head and I'm like, well, logically, I should probably do this, or maybe people expect me to do that, or whatever. That creates a sense of freedom for me and a sense where I can fully enjoy my life. And from a neurological perspective, for my nervous system, this is just such a nicer way to live life. I live life in a very slow, mindful way, but that's exactly what I want and it feels really good to me. So obviously that doesn't mean that you have to go out and quit your job and do this and do that, unless that's what you really want. Unless those are things that feel really good to you. And um, in that case, just start taking small steps to work towards that. Um, in that, in this kind of um, area that I'm talking about now, I also want to mention human design because that's something that helped me a lot as well. For those of you who are into human design, I'm a projector. <laughs> so I do like my downtown. It's downtime. It's really good for me. Um, yeah, if you don't know anything about human design, um, check out Jenna Zoe on Instagram. She has some really good um, posts about it. She has some courses online as well that I really enjoyed. So I'll have that link down below. Obviously, you don't have to look into this if it doesn't call you. Um, but looking into it kind of gave me that permission slip to live life the way I want it. Like one of the things that Jenna Zoe always says is that the way you should be doing life is the way that you secretly want it want to do it. I think we all have that sort of voice in our head saying like, oh, I kind of wish I could do it this way instead of this way, or I kind of wish I could, you know, live this way instead of that way, or doing the thing that you actually secretly want to do is actually the thing that will help you create the life that you want to have. So that's my third tip. And then the last one is that I did change my diet. I uh, filmed a diet update a couple of weeks ago, so I'll have that linked as well if you want to have more details on that. Um, basically, I'm no longer fully plant-based. I eat fish about twice a week and eggs maybe like one or twice uh, a week as well. It was a decision that was really hard for me. It's a decision that I have been postponing for a very long time because I just wanted to exhaust all the other options that I could before going to that um, just because I still fully connect with the moral um, side of veganism and that's why I've pushed it to like the very last thing that I wanted to try um, but I have to be honest like I do feel a difference in my body since incorporating very small amounts of fish and eggs back into my diet um, I feel more grounded I feel stronger in my body uh, I, it's really hard to explain in words exactly how it feels, but it feels like my body is more settled, like my nervous system is more settled and grounded. Um, and I only eat it when I crave it, when I feel like my body's telling me to have it. Um, so there will be weeks where, you know, I don't have any fish for that whole week because I don't feel called to eat any fish. Um, but yeah, that is something that helped me now. I'm not saying that you know you can't heal from CFS uh, eating plant-based, not at all, because there's actually a woman here on YouTube that I follow called um, Reagan, I think her last name is Eagle or Eagle or something like that. Uh, and she actually healed from CFS going plant-based and that really helped her. Um, I think it's really important when it comes to these chronic illnesses to understand that um, you have to look at it as a full picture thing and you will have to change different things about your life. It's not like just changing your diet is going to help you. You need to also look at your mindset. How is your nervous system doing? Are you feeling fulfilled in your life? Are you actually living a life that feels really good to you, that is um, in connection with your soul and what your soul desires? Um, so. That was one of the things that I had to learn through this process is there's not a quick fix. There is not like a magic pill that you can take to um, heal from CFS. It really is a, a lifestyle change that you have to go through. Um, so yeah, I hope that these um, tips helped you. Feel free to ask questions down below and I'll try my best to answer all of you guys. Um, yeah. Moving forward from now, um, I'm just really excited to get back into fitness and because I used to run um, 30 minutes uh, a day every day before school in my first year of uni and in high school and I haven't done that in a very long time so I'm excited to get back into that, to get back into strength training and um, I just feel like my life has 
opened up again and I can start doing all of these fun things again um, and it, it actually feeling really good in my body as well so um, I think I'll film a video really soon, a vlog about what I'm doing to slowly inch my way back into um, getting back into shape and feeling stronger again in my body. Um, so yeah, I think the last thing I want to mention um, for those of you who are on your recovery path is that um, even now when I'm fully healed, I'll still have one day or two days a week where I feel like laying down after lunch and having a little 20, 20 or maybe 30 minute nap. Um, it's very normal. It's very normal that our energy kind of flows throughout the day. And it's normal that, you know, some days you feel super energized and you're like pumped to go out for a run and do things. And then other days you just feel a bit more lethargic and you just want to stay inside and maybe not do as much. Um, and that's something that like living with someone, living with Vanessa has been really helpful for me, seeing how she kind of um, goes through these waves of energy as well. It reminds me constantly, like it's so normal to feel tired from time to time. It's a normal thing. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that in as a little extra bonus insight or tip or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye, my loves. Take care.